to another video. If you haven't seen my recent video before this one, I introduced you to our little teardrop camper and I recently did a couple upgrades to it. One of them being Starlink and the other, we used our Anchor Solix for the first time. Well, we didn't use that for the first time. I used the solar panel for it for the first time. And if you see in this still shot here, I had to run the cable for both the Starlink and the solar panel out under the door and I don't like that. So I bought some stuff off Amazon that I'm hoping will help make it look a little cleaner and more finished because I'm kind of weird like that. I like things looking factory custom. So the first thing I got was this RJ45 connector, if I can get it off. So it's female by female and it comes with a little bulkhead nut there. So basically I'm gonna drill a hole through the back wall so I can feed the cable. I watched a YouTube video that says a Cat 7 or Cat 8 cable should work with the Starlink. So I bought a three foot cable for inside the camper, which will plug into the adapter. And then I can run the regular full Starlink cable through and out the back of the camper, which I'll show you later. So the other thing I got, similar to Starlink, I wanted a finished look. So I bought a 30 foot XT60 cable and something similar, a little bulkhead adapter. Again, I'll drill a hole through the back wall I can use the short cord from the that comes with the anchor from this to the C1000, and then I'll be able to plug in the 30-foot cable from here. Again, run it outside to the solar panel. That way I don't have cables running through doors. This will also allow me more flexibility to move the solar panel around to catch the sun. The first thing I need to do is I need to verify that I can indeed use that Cat 8 cable with this adapter and still have the Starlink work. So I wanna just get that set up really quick and make sure that it still provides a connection between the two. I don't need to connect it to the satellites or anything i'll be able to check through the app as if it's connecting so let me get that set up all right so down in dirty i got the power supply plugged in to the router i plugged in the three foot cable to the female by female adapter and then i have the starlink cable plugged into the antenna so i'm going to open up the app on my phone here and just see if it's actually communicating with the dish because if it is then we should be good to go. Okay, there is the Wi-Fi network, which is good. But again, that's just the router displaying that. So internet may not be available. We'll connect only this one time here and go back to the Starlink app. It's searching for satellites. So I think that might be good. Actually, I think what I'm going to do is stick this outside, even though I'm not going to get a clear view of the northern sky. I'm going to stick it outside and see if we get a signal here. All right, we'll come back when there's a signal. All right, it's optimizing the connection, so that must mean that it's connecting to the satellite, but I'm going to wait until we get a full connection on this, just to be sure, before I go drilling holes in walls. Connected, as you can see here, I'm doing a speed test. Again, this is not aligned perfect. My garage faces south, so trying to get a view of the north sky, and it's having issues, but you can see I'm, I'm connected to the internet, so it works, which is great. So that means I can start to install this stuff into the camper. All right, so here we are in the camper. First thing I gotta do is we need some room to work. So I gotta get all this stuff out of the way because we're going to be putting holes in that back wall there. So let's start emptying some of this stuff out. It was at this moment that I didn't know my mic had died. So while you're watching me finish making room, I'll let you know that for the remainder of the video, it's going to be another voiceover. Thanks to a rookie mistake, I did not make sure to periodically check the battery status of my mic and it died. As I said, I had to finish clearing everything out of the way so I could have full access to that back wall. Now that we got the mattress out of the way, we can get back there and I can determine where exactly I want to put these adapters. Here I am talking about how I will be removing the main power panel and if necessary the radio to gain access to the void between the wall and the kitchen. First let's start with that power panel. There's just one screw that holds the cover in place. After removing that, the cover just pops right off with a little pressure. Then with the cover out of the way, there are four screws holding the main panel itself in place. So let's get those out of the way. 
after all four screws are out, a little tug, and the entire panel just pulls right out. Now that it's out of the way, I can start doing some investigation on where the framing is and where I have access to put these two adapters. Here we can see the aluminum framing behind the wall. I'm feeling around inside to determine exactly where these one by ones are. I was having a somewhat difficult time figuring out exactly where I would have room to put these adapters. My initial thought was perhaps right above the side of the fireplace. I didn't want to go directly above the heat outlet, so I thought, let me try and get this cover off. After wrestling with it for a bit, I didn't want to break it, so I went around to the kitchen and I looked up inside the void and found out there really wasn't much room between the fireplace and the framing, so I scrapped that idea. After thinking about it some more, I pulled the TV away from the wall and decided this area would be a much better place to put these. They would be out of sight once the TV was put back in place, and as you can see, there are already a bunch of other outlets here. With the final decision made, it was time to measure out exactly where I needed to drill these holes. First up was the XT60 adapter. I knew those audiovisual jacks had been cut out right next to the 1x1 aluminum stud, so taking that width and half the width of the hole I was making, I measured over to get my center. I also wanted it centered up with that other outlet, so I'm pushing it back into place and putting the old trusty eyeball on it. Here, I'm double checking that I will be able to catch that stud with a couple of the screws that hold the jack in place. As the saying goes, measure twice, cut once. So I adjusted my measurement just a little bit. Another visual check with the jack itself, and I was comfortable with this mark, so it was time to drill my first hole. This is just a very thin piece of what is basically backer board, so I am lightly feathering the impact so as not to either make the hole too big or risk hitting any wiring that may be behind there. A quick fit check for the jack, and that hole is done. Since the RJ45 adapter just had a bulkhead nut secured in place, I didn't need to locate it near a stud like the XT60. That made placement for it a lot easier. I went with directly below that audiovisual jack. With it not having to be measured off of a stud, it was back to the old trusty eyeball again for placement. Once again, pushing that outlet back in place and centering the hole off of it. For those that do not know, I am using what is called a step bit to drill these holes. These bits are great as they allow you to drill many different sized holes without having to change out bits multiple times. Once again, I am feathering the impact. I want to make sure I do not make this hole too big as the size between the adapter itself and the nut is not that different. Making the hole too big would not allow that nut to grab the back of the wall and hold the adapter in place. After a few checks and widening the hole a little more, it was just the right size. Now I can reach in behind and tighten on that bulkhead nut. With both adapters secured in place, now it was time to fish both the cables up into the void and connect them to their adapters. So I grabbed the Starlink cable and the 30 foot XT60 cable and moved around to the back of the camper. That void can be accessed by reaching up behind the kitchen sink. So I started by pushing the ends of the cables up over the back wall of the cabinet. Once I did that, I could go back into the cabin and grab those ends and connect them to their respective adapters. First was the Starlink cable into the female by female RJ45 adapter. Thankfully, the placement I chose for the XT60 placed that pigtail on the adapter just within reach of the power panel opening so it was easy to see. Just one problem. After being so diligent about measurements, I failed to check which end of the XT60 cable I was feeding up and as you can see here, I chose poorly. So back to the back of the camper to switch that around. Okay, now that we have that sorted out, time to plug that in. I'm pointing out here what I may want to do for cable management in the future, but for the time being, I decided to just zip tie the two cables to the existing coax cable just to keep them from coming in contact with the diesel heater hose. Now that I had the cable secured, all that's left is to button things up. I went ahead and added the screws to the XT60 adapter and secured it to that aluminum stud behind the wall. Then pushed the factory RCA coax panel back into place and secured that with its screws as well. Then I went ahead and twisted on the cap of the RJ45 adapter. And here we have the finished look. 
I think it turned out pretty well, and the best part is, no connectors or adapters just hanging out looking out of place. With both adapters fully secured in place and the cables plugged in, it was time to reassemble the power panel and clean up my mess on the inside. This little battery powered Milwaukee vacuum is one of my favorite things that we added to our setup. It makes cleaning up super easy, whether it's mess from mods or from dragging in the dirt, leaves, or other debris from outside. After cleaning up the mess inside, it was time to move back outside. Under the camper here, you can see the bottom of the old battery well. This has come in handy as a good way to get things into the interior without drilling into the sides of the camper itself. You can see the power cables running out to the plug for our diesel heater as well as the four inch marine hatch I installed to pass the diesel heater hose through up under the sink. So I'm down here again to make another hole to pass the Starlink and the XD60 cable through. I was hoping maybe the hole for the diesel power cables was already big enough, but it was not unfortunately. So I went to the opposite side and drilled another hole. Once again, feathering the impact from inside so as to make a hole just big enough to pass the heads of the cables through. Eventually, I'd like to seal these holes better as it is allowing for some dust intrusion up under the sink. As a final step, it's time to wrap up the cables under the sink so it doesn't turn into an absolute rat's nest down there. I got this pack of different types of Velcro wraps from Costco and they really are handy. So I grabbed a couple of them to wrap up the two cables. All right, got them nice and secure, and they fit nicely into the old lid from the battery compartment. I can't wait to see how much better this makes using both the Starlink and the solar panel for the Anchor Solix. I hope you found this video informative, and thank you so much for watching. That closes the door on this video, and I'll see you in the next one.